all games walk the same development road. Some have large teams and are completed on time with a full complement of features, and others are created by skeleton crews that inevitably have to chop content to get the game out on time. And then, they're the games that seemingly live in development purgatory, missing their release date in the name of quality. Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl tries to fall into this last group, and qualifies by being in development for four years. But quality isn't exactly a word we'd associate with this unique, yet incredibly frustrating shooter. The nuclear disaster at Chernobyl is becoming a distant memory, but the radiation is beginning to have an effect on those hardy enough to stomp the ground surrounding it. Strange mutated creatures have been popping up, and the zone is populated with bounty hunters and rival clans. It's a dangerous place to be sure, and as luck would have it, you've been plopped down right in the middle of all the chaos. This is the setup for Stalker, and the game dribbles out bits of information at a snail's pace. The plot can be extremely difficult to follow, as you'll run into, literally, hundreds of non-playable characters in the zone, who all have something to contribute. Basically, all you know is that you're supposed to find a character named Strelok, and you'll have to figure out the rest as you go along. The setup is fine, and it's aided by an incredible sense of atmosphere that few games provide, but the design certainly hampers the storytelling in Stalker. Stalker is truly a first as far as its design is concerned. It plays very much like World of Warcraft with assault rifles. The zone is absolutely enormous, and as you venture forth, you'll come across all sorts of unsavory characters, and many have mission objectives for you to accomplish, and they give you a mission straight away, or items to trade for. This is where a lot of the confusion comes into play. You're given so many mission objectives that it's inevitable you'll forget some of them. While you have a PDA to keep track of everything, remembering where to return after completing some of the objectives is a puzzle unto itself, and it's not helped much by the cumbersome map system. At one point, we realized we had acquired some information that needed to be returned to a particular area. But by the time we figured out where it needed to be taken, we were already five virtual miles away and couldn't be bothered to go back. The lack of any sort of vehicle doesn't exactly help with this either. With that said, the scope of Stalker is really second to none. You could conceivably spend over 60 hours attempting to complete all the side quests. Granted, most of them are pretty dull. You'll spend a lot of time fetching items from one person and taking them to another, killing targets, or defending areas. It's all pretty standard fare, but it's there for the taking. The good news is that the main quest, if you can figure out how to stay on it, is fairly engrossing. Aside from the single-player campaign, Stalker also includes some rudimentary multiplayer options. You get the standard deathmatch and team deathmatch, and that's about it. When there's so much content to play through solo, it's hard to ding a game like this too hard for not being the next Battlefield 1942. As the name suggests, Stalker is all about tracking down targets and terminating them, and you're gonna need weapons to do this. While the armaments are realistic in their appearance, using them is anything but. The guns are simply far too inaccurate. When you deliver a shotgun blast to an enemy at point-blank range, there's no reason in the world that they should not drop to their knees, yet this happens constantly. The same holds true of any other gun in the game, as enemies walk through waves of bullets like spray from a water hose. Either the guns are incredibly inaccurate, or the hit detection is bogus. Either way, it makes for a frustrating game, and that's just the beginning. The game auto-saves when you enter a new area, but that's the only time it does. Considering just a couple of bullets will kill you on the normal difficulty setting until you get some decent armor, it can become incredibly frustrating and annoying to have to constantly save the game for fear of losing progress. Making the game even more grating is the incredible enemy AI. They'll flank, sneak up behind you, and otherwise pull out just about every trick in the book. Normally, this is a huge positive for a game, but it ultimately makes Stalker less enjoyable when coupled with the other issues. When you do manage to down an enemy, you can pillage the corpse for new equipment and health items. Money is supposed to govern the entire game, but it's practically pointless when you can get all the equipment and items you need by simply searching fallen soldiers. Stalker is also one of those games that allows you to fill up your inventory to the point where you can't move. Why it doesn't just stop you from picking up more items once the weight limit has been reached is anyone's guess. Stalker is one of those games that hardcore shooting fans will eat up but the rest will be left wondering what the fuss is all about. It has some unique ideas with its open-ended world and myriad of mission objectives, but it's all dampened by its questionable gunplay. It should also be noted that it's a resource hog. 
We played it on a typical gaming rig and had to crank down the options just to make it run smoothly. Complaints aside, it does manage to pour on the atmosphere with some incredible sound design and spooky creatures. And the ideas here will undoubtedly be copied in the future. It's just a shame it wasn't nailed out of the gate.